From the earliest days of Le Puck Up, the French have been gathering in cafes to engage one another in discussion and debate. Conversation can be raised to a fine art now that coffee is replacing wine and beer as the beverage of choice. Tout le monde boit, les hommes, les femmes, euh, dans la haute société, dans le bas peuple, on boit beaucoup. Et c'est pas en France on boit le plus, on boit plus en Allemagne, on boit le plus en Hollande, en Angleterre. En France, sous Louis XIV et Louis XV, donc 17e, 18e, un homme boit en moyenne 7 à 8 litres de vin par jour, par jour, plus à peu près un demi-litre d'alcool pur par jour. Et il travaille 14, 15 heures par jour. Tout le monde boit, j'insiste bien là-dessus, même les enfants. I believe you was under an alcoholic haze for decades. Then all of a sudden coffee started to come in and you found new, a new place where people could drink and, and communicate um, and join together without the alcohol. Newly sober and alert, Europeans can finally take stock. Around the marble top tables of their cafes, the French discuss events of the day and consider what might be done about them. Once again, coffee is stimulating social ferment. The coffee shop had an important role to play where the coffee shop owner put newspapers around. They became places where people would congregate to have important political discussions. And I've got no doubt that it certainly helped to have a clear head. No use if you're um, slightly beschwipsed, slightly drunk, you know, to, uh, that, doesn't, that doesn't make for good discussions about, um, you know, war plans or political plans. Very many revolutionary movements started in cafes. That's absolutely true. Because, for instance, Marat, Robespierre, Danton, they sat in all these people were beheaded afterwards, but until they had their head, they could talk and really and discuss and really do something. C'est ce que fait Camille Desmoulins après la chute de la Bastille. Il donne rendez-vous à ses partisans au café de foie. Et c'est là où Camille Desmoulins fait cette fameuse déclaration. Il prend une feuille d'un arbre du Palais Royal et il l'a dit, nous devrions porter, comme je fais moi-même, une cocarde à notre chapeau pour nous reconnaître. Et c'est effectivement là que du coup, le café de foi devient le café des, entre guillemets, cocardiers, ceux qu'on appellera les révolutionnaires. 